How are you guys doing? Good. How are good. you, sir? Good. good. I, I'm just to let you know that Collider does have more money, but we just only felt that you guys deserved three mics instead yeah, of five. In post. We do a post. That's yeah, okay, because we, we, we feel like only three of us deserve to talk, but we're not going to tell you which three. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, uh, I have a million questions, uh, but I'm going to start with, uh, I'm, I'm curious, how do you guys, because there's so many people working on this movie, and so many departments, so many people doing the VFX, how do you keep track of who is doing what? And more importantly, how does it never leak? I'm, I'm shocked that none of these shots or, you know what I mean, ever get out. You're making me panic because I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> Actually, are a lot of people who know what's going on. It might be leaking right now. Well, we know. <laughs> I mean, it's, we, we do say it's like a consortium of generals, and you're looking at a part of that consortium right now. Is that, you know, there, there are a lot of you know, key collaborative uh, um, uh, individuals that it takes to make something of the scale. Uh, I, you know, the great thing with us is that you know, we, we have sort of a, uh, a room full of trusted uh, advisors that we work with that includes everyone sitting here, and then they each have thousands of people working underneath them that they have to communicate efficiently with uh, uh, about storytelling, uh, the sensitivity to character, uh, and, you know, in a film like this that is filled with CG characters, and one in particular being Thanos, who has to, you know, in a lot of ways carry the emotional center of the movie. Uh, um, we have said this before, it is his film and he's exclusively CG and, you know, I, I would argue that I don't know that that's ever been done before on this scale and, and, and where, the, the, you know, that level of emotion was conveyed to an audience. Uh, that, that they have the hardest task of anyone, um, uh, making sure that the humanity and the storytelling stays consistent from shot to shot throughout the movie. So maybe you guys can talk a little bit about how you communicate with your teams. Yeah, I think it's, you know, um Starting out, it's a, we, for production side, we've got a small army of people that track all the shots, right? And it's something that, you know, you'll, you cast the different visual effects houses based on what their specialties are. So on, on Infinity War, we had 14 different visual effects houses working on the film. And so based on, you know, the daily processes, you know, shots come in from the visual effects houses. They're kind of checked in. They're tracked throughout the day. We sit in dailies all day long in the dark room and review them all, send notes out, and then send them back back out to the visual effects houses. Yeah, and yeah. Then, then we get those notes. <laughs> <laughs> we sit in a, another screening room all day long uh, and go over the notes and new stuff that's coming in that we make either uh, notes to send um, with delivery notes and like it's this big back and forth collaboration. And what's really exciting um, about the scope and size of this project it is like how many shots total? Twenty. Uh, two thousand six hundred and twenty-three, and there's two thousand seven hundred and three in the movie. So there's eighty shots we didn't actually work on. So ninety-seven so percent of <laughs> yeah. the film is, has yeah. visual effects uh, Which, if involved. I can, if I can just follow up though, I am amazed though on a movie like this with so many thousands of people and companies working on it that nothing ever gets out. Are all these computers <laughs> air gapped? Like, what's the deal? Yes, <laughs> they are actually. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> that explains a little bit. Um, and I think there's just an, uh, a code of ethics within the industry. Uh, this goes not just for people working on visual effects, but crew members uh, on set, uh, location shoots, what have you. Uh, any member of the film crew, um, all the way through post-production, pre-production. Um, you know, you this is what your job is. And if you are <laughs> go and leak stuff, you're not going to be doing it for very long. You know, that's it's pretty simple. I should warn you if you ask any more questions about our security, your name is going to show up on a, on a list. But uh. no, but I'm I'm constantly amazed though. Um, it ends up inevitably that the leaks come out when Lego releases their toy images or a toy image more than it's the people working on the film. You know that's how things get out. But it's interesting about toy leaks is that 99% of the time they're not accurate because toys are frankly tailored. Uh, uh, to either like old concepts or completely different concepts than what's in the movie. I, I'm, I, I laugh a lot when those toy leaks show up because I'm like, well, that's great because that's a misdirect because <laughs> it has nothing to do with the film. So, you know, frankly, the, the, the very essential nature of the storytelling is contained within, you know, the brains and computers of, uh, of uh, all, all the uh, um, great individuals working at all the effects houses on the movie. That is w much more sensitive material. And as Kelly said, the testament to that industry is 
uh, as you said, there's a code of ethics there, and and um, you know a lot of sensitive information. Uh, at least on the four movies we've worked on, has passed through um, um, all of these companies, and nothing's ever leaked. I there's a million things I want to talk about with the VFX in this movie, which are uh, I don't want to drop an f bomb, but f bomb incredible. Um, so I'm just going to say, but I wanted to focus on one thing, which is the moon when he grabs the moon and he's throwing it down, which was shown I think at D23. It's this moment that is awesome and fans love. I want to talk about from the genesis of that idea to getting it on screen. Can you sort of take us through the process of how something like that is made? I remember that day. That was um, so we, we start in previs. Well, you know, a lot of times we start before the script and we just kind of start playing with ideas. So, you know, it's because with Titan, we kind of do it was like a lower gravity planet. So we would just start doing motion studies of like how characters can move and you know, what would it mean for Spider-Man to swing in zero G and that type of thing. And, and so as, as the previs evolves, you know, we, we start telling a narrative and kind of fitting it into the script and then, you know, and kind of, you know, how big do we make the battle? And I think we had a review one day and we showed, we were talking to Joe about it and showing Joe and Joe's like, yeah, he should like pull the moon out of orbit. And it's like, okay. <laughs> and so we went and walked up the shot of pulling the moon out of orbit and it just became one of the biggest shots of the film. It is, it's yeah. crazy. We say that we're like, you know, we're kids with a really, really expensive Lego set. Uh, we can, anything you can dream up, these guys can make happen. And I think, you know, ultimately too, it's like, what's so valuable about that though is that they, they, they all are storytellers and they understand exactly what we're trying to accomplish. And we've all collaborated on several movies together now. And I think that it's created uh, um, an amazing, an amazingly consistent level of quality and exploration, and I, 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 you know, I feel like, and you, you think the, um, the effects of that movie are effing incredible. I think they're effing incredible, and I, we can stand back and separate ourselves from it because, you know, we, we didn't do all the heavy lifting on those VFX. These guys did, and we can look at it and go, that is exactly our vision as intended, relayed on the screen, in, 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 in an incredibly fantastical story, uh, on a scale that I don't know. You know, like I said, outside of the Lord of the Rings movies has been achieved before. And with a central character who is ex exclusively CG, who carries the emotional uh, arc of the film. I, I definitely want to dig down a little bit more in terms of, okay, so it's not in the script that he grabs the planet. That's just an idea thrown out in the room when you're looking at dailies. Yeah, well, here we, I mean, we go through a really uh, ex exhaustive uh, process of experimentation. I mean, the, the amount of ideas that we will explore with this team here and, and, and our wider team is like far beyond what ends up in the actual film. Um, I mean, that's, you, for instance, that's how, that's how Thanos came to happen, to be honest with you. You know, we, early on in the process, Dan came to us and said that, um, you thought the technology was finally there to support like facial cap, human facial capture to a, to a level that nobody's ever seen before and that it might work for the character of Thanos. And so we did a test with the actor Josh Brolin. And when Joe and I saw that test, it kind of blew the whole mo movie open for us um, because we thought, my God, we can really take this guy, this character to a very subtle, complicated interior place and, and, and give him an arc like you would give a, a lead character that's a hero. And really, because uh, we had the ability to take a fantastical creature like him and make him accessible on a human emotion scale um, like never before. And I think that, you know, again, that is one of the things that came out of the process of experimentation before we all go to work for real on the film in terms of executing what, we, uh, what we're set out to do. Um, but there's, we can give you, there's, there's more examples than you would ever care to hear about ideas that uh, don't make the movie. Well, the thing that I find fascinating, as you said earlier, I believe there's 80 shots in the film that do not have VFX, which is like insane. You know what I mean? Um, what do you think, is there a shot or two in the film that is, people wouldn't realize there's just heavy VFX in it where it's like so subtle, like something you're super proud of that maybe doesn't, it's unher unheralded, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this film, I mean, you know, this film is, it's based on its scale. I think, you know, everything's kind of huge, right? I think it's, you know, I think for us, it's, it's, um, you know, kind of what Anth was hitting on. It's like when you stop 
thinking Thanos is a visual effect and you just start buying him as a lead character in the movie or like, you know, the, the antagonist of the movie and, and believing in his mission and understanding him and sympathizing him, I think that's kind of where we're proud of things in this movie. You know, the, the invisible effects, and I don't know, there's not really that many scenes that we got a chance to do them in just because it's, you know, you're in Wakanda, you're in Nidalevir, you're in um, Vormir, you're in, you know, the... Uh, at the beginning of the film with the Thor on the as guardian ship, you know, everything is everything is the visual effects in this film. And it's 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 something that, you know, as as a as a as kind of a, a, a defining moment in your career getting to work on something like that. It's pretty amazing. When it's just you're you're able to collaborate so much and, and to be kind of, you know, at the you know, kind of a, a key place in, in the storytelling. It's pretty amazing. I think yeah I was just gonna say, uh the, you know, back to what um, Joe and Anthony said, the, it's just the storytelling and everyone's a storyteller. Um, and so I think y in a film like this, you don't, y you watch it and you're just enjoying the story. You're paying attention to the story and it becomes less about, is that is that CG? Is that not CG? Or how did they do, like, is that real? Is that not real? And it just sort of all, you know, I, I feel like the work in this film is at a level that that stuff falls away and you're really just involved in the story and not so much thinking about how did they do that or, or um, yeah. I mean, that being said, we, Wakanda's a horse farm in Atlanta and then everything was blown away and African trees were put, you know, we, we, we kind of planted this entire field and said, okay, we can at least have some of the field be part of Wakanda and then it got trampled and rained on. So, you know, 20 by 20 feet of the, of the field, if even less sometimes is like actually there, you know, Titan was a, a stage, you know, and, you know, not so much invisible effects, but large portions of the movie yeah. were, were were placed well, in that. You yeah. know, back to the Wakanda beat. There's a shot. There's oh, sorry. There's there's a shot in the Wakanda beat where where uh, some of the heroes um, uh, dissipate away, and um, you're looking around, and that, that's the effect in the scene. But the entire field, everything field is all CG, the, the secondary characters and Okoye. And it, I got I got to tell you, it's <clears throat> insane. The what VFX, what you guys did in this movie, the, what the VFX have now gotten to, because as someone who's watched the movie multiple times, I I don't see these people as as CGI thing. You know, like it's they're just they're there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, I, I want I want to switch real quick if you don't mind because I have limited time. I'm curious that the, this for people who are watching this who have not seen the movie spoilers. Uh, there's something that happens at the end called the dusting, mm -hmm. and I'm curious how you designed. Uh, what that was going to look like and the collaboration, you know, because that's that moment needs to be shatter fans. It needs to, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. it's this iconic moment. So talk a little bit about the design of the dusting. So it's something we started off. If you, if you watch the film, it's kind of the there's like a signature kind of look for all the powers of the stones, right? Is, they, is they're kind of used individually and then mixed together. They're always, you know, color coded to the stone and, and kind of combined in interesting ways. And so when we started with the initial passes of it, we were, you know, since it was using all six stones, it was something that initially we tried to kind of keep that same language happening when they, everybody turned to dust. And, and all that happened was it, it just got, you know, too many light effects. It was kind of, you know, the idea that was, you know, the, there was the dust and there was kind of an a, a light, interior light like the soul was there. And it, and it just became something that just ultimately just stepped on every performance we had. I mean, we started with, with Tom's performance with when Pete disappears. And, you know, it was just something that just kind of shattered what was happening in the scene. So basically the design language then became, you know, well, what are the actors feeling <coughs> in that moment? You know, Pete's hanging on as long as he can, right? He's, he's, he's kind of... And so you're kind of animating the particles in a way that, you know, try to preserve that. If you look at um, Scarlet Witch uh, with Wanda, you know, she just lets herself go. You know, so like each, each kind of design, once we lost all those extra light effects and just kind of went with something that was sympathetic with the dust of the performances, that's ultimately what is the shattering moment. Because each one, you know, Pete hangs on. Liz, you know, when she did her performance, she just kind of rocks her head back like she's letting herself go. Vision's dead. She's lost everything in the world and the particles go away. You know, Bucky hangs on until, you know, his last look to Steve and then hits the ground and then, you know, splatters and, you know, splits into the dust. And it's like, it was really trying to understand what the actors were doing and kind of playing off in the, in the dust itself. I'm, I'm curious for, for you guys, when you're on set and you're directing that, you're not exactly sure, I, I would imagine you're not exactly sure what it's going to look like. Or did you, did you, were you far enough along where you kind of knew what it would look like when you were directing it on set? 
I mean, we we hadn't certainly settled on what it would the final look would be, but we had experimented with that, I believe, at that point. But that's look. One of the great things for Joe and I is, you know, when we're as directors, when we're on set, the one of the miracles of working with Dan and this visual effects team is that like we know that we can go almost anywhere. We can change the plan. We can find things that are happening on set, particularly with the actors, like Dan was talking about. And we can change things as we need to on a visual effects plan per what's happening as we execute them on a stage, as we shoot, which is like an amazing uh, tool for us to have, Joe and I as directors. And it really allows for like a, a, a huge process. Even though you do a ton of work before you ever get to set, it, it also allows for a huge process, process of discovery on the set while you're working with the actors, while you're working with these sets that you have physically built um, that allows us to change course and find opportunities at every stage of the process. I think that's the trick working with Joe and Anne because I was with, with Winter Soldier and Civil War, I, you know, I got to stand behind them for two movies and like learned everything as much as I possibly could. And, and, the, and the trick with them is it's giving, you know, making sure our job is to give them that environment in which they can just be creative and just run. And, and I think that's hopefully what we achieved. I'm almost out of time. I want to ask a few uh, few quick questions. Um, did you change anything for the Blu-ray release of the movie? Uh, was there like a VFX shot that you're like, oh man, we need another second on this one before it hits the Blu-ray? Yeah, we, we never stop. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, so never did you, stop. Did, did, were there any shots that you actually tweaked before it hit the Blu-ray? You tune them up a little bit. Do you want do you want to mention which one or no? No, that's all right. All right. Uh, uh, so my, uh, another thing is, um, so I heard, and I could be wrong, that like an earlier cut of the film had Bruce Banner and the Hulk more like sort of talking to one another and uh, what was it? Uh, where they were more like working together where they're each having control. Is that true or not true? No, it's no. Yeah. I mean, if you go back in the right, way back in the writing phase, you know, uh, for as experimental as we are on a, on a visual execution level, like we've been speaking about, you know, we go through that same process of experimentation with Marcus and McFeely, the writers of the script. So we spend many, many months together talking about different ideas, different ways to take the characters. So the, there, there, was, there was probably a process where we went through different ideas with Banner that may have included what you're talking about, but it never really got mature there into was, the there film. There was some yeah. sort of actor's strange universe right I can't remember what it was yeah where Banner may have confronted the Hulk or something I can't remember yeah. this is three years ago sure uh, and probably 40 <laughs> iterations of the script earlier but I'm sure at some point yeah that uh, we pitched out we pitched out a thousand ideas for uh, what what that movie could have eventually uh, been and um, you know my last two things and they're quick uh, what is the, you have a movie coming out, a, a sequel, that is, uh, you know, anticipated, I heard. Uh, I would imagine you have to finish it by a certain point. So is that date has to be, a, like, in sometime in March, I would imagine, there's like a drop date where it has to be locked. Are you close? It's actually 5 p.m. today, so we, <laughs> <laughs> we have to wrap this up. <laughs> no, but do you, I mean, is, you, do you have like that drop date where it, it has to be done done? We do, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's very hard to to to, to yeah. say what it is because there are so many different stages to the process. But essentially, uh, we're done with the movie at the end of March, completely done. Yeah, I, invariably, or, or not, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> invariably, it always gets pushed a week past when I we're just, supposed I to deliver. Joe and I are done with the movie. <laughs> uh, this is my last thing. Uh, you you've said in the past, uh, and I have to ask this because. I heard that this could be, and, and this is, it's not a spoiler question for Endgame, but it's, I heard this could be the first Marvel movie that you guys are releasing at three hours. And you've said that before. Are you still at the three-hour mark? Is it close to that? We're, we're still at the three-hour mark. Right. Do you yeah. think it's, well, the, the studio is going to be down with a three-hour movie? I mean, movie? I think the studio is down with whatever the best story is. And, and right now, the, yeah, the yeah. We, you know, we think the movie's playing well, and... And we've had you know great responses from uh, our test audiences, and we're feeling very good about where it is. We're still doing work to it. Yeah, we're, uh, we're definitely not done. Yeah, we're not done with it. Uh, but it it is a you know it, again this is a culmination film uh, of, of you know 22 movies. It's a lot of storytelling. Uh, um, 
to work into it. And, um, you know, emotion is a, an intrinsic part of that to us. And uh, when you want, uh, when you have to tell a, a really complicated story and you want strong emotional moments for the characters, it just requires a certain amount of, of real estate. And this one in particular is, feels like three hours worth of real estate. I would be down with a four hour movie. My only yeah. thing is for kids. Like, if, yeah. w- are, you, are you even thinking intermission or no? I, you know, we, we, t- we joke about it at the edit room, but uh, I think... Uh, we'll see this. We, yeah. we have screened the movie four times for... Um, audiences. We've screened the movie four times for audiences now. Uh, so there are people out there that know how it ends. Damn perha- them. Perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> but and the, the, for the first three screenings, not a single person got up to go to the bathroom. We took, we took that as a good sign. <laughs> say no more. I could ask you a million other questions. I'm just going to say, and I mean it seriously, amazing work on Infinity War. Uh, I, I, I give hats off. The visual effects are insane. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for you. your time. Thanks, guys.